FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good <clears throat> morning, Indubians. Wow. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indu Podcast, where drive time meets late night talk shows. We aim to entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. We're recording live from South Side of Little, I'm sorry, the South Side of Wakanda in Little New Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive. How are you, Courtney? I am doing well. How are you doing today? I am spectacular. I guess a little sing songy, I suppose. Um, wow, that felt like a lot of alliteration just there. And um, <laughs> I guess good. I'm a little warm. Uh, New England is, I want to say, suffering. Are we suffering from a heat wave? Well, a heat wave suffering. is upon so us. Dramatic. So dramatic. Oh, oh yes, because you're you're from the south, and like <laughs> heat is just like what second nature, or maybe first nature, it's, I guess. Because it's second. Well, I guess it is kind of first nature. Nature. But we're not even in the heat of the summer because it's not even officially summer yet. True. It's hot, though. It, yes, it, it is hot. Um, well, I mean, I don't, how hot, what is the temperature, the weather like today? And we are recording on a Wednesday when this episode is going out. So it's like fresh, like news. Mm-hmm. So today the high is 86. And I think we're probably at the high right now. But it's also been raining like okay. every day for the mm. past four days or so. So it's also a bit muggy. So we've got uh, that muggy, wet, gross. heavy air. Yeah, it's gross. And it's also hot. So, yeah. Mm. We're, we're in really similar camps because it's 90 here, also muggy. Oof. Oof. In fact, it's possible while we're recording because it's sunny right now. But I did check the, the Doppler radar. Check the Doppler radar before we started recording just now. And it looks like we might be in for some storms maybe possibly so Mm, just make mm -hmm. sure you take a look out carry your umbrella with you but be careful don't be out in the fields with your umbrella up or you may be struck you were warned (laughs) here first back to you jim okay i'm done (laughs) um so yeah it's sunny currently but yeah like i said the storms may be just in case you do hear rumbles but i do have fans on in the background and we discussed before we started recording you didn't hear it so you may not hear the thunders either but hey, warm weather, summer is here. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, a warm weekend or week. Very hot. Mm-hmm. I, I told you that, um, well, I'm spectacular now. I wasn't mm-hmm. that way if you asked me Monday or even Sunday because I was out and about on Saturday and uh, I was with the kid. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to, you know, play outside because he's an outside kid. He likes the sunshine. He likes the grass and all the fresh air and blah, blah, blah. And I like being inside. But, you know, to entertain the kid, we go outside. Uh, I think we toss around a Frisbee for a little while at first. Nope. Let me me just go and jump to the chase. (laughs) He decides that he wants to play tag. First, he says he want to play Among Us uh, slash Mm -hmm. imposters, which you really can't do with two people in real time like in real, real life like real yeah, life isn't that a video game it is a video game but okay it is something that has evolved at least on the playgrounds that we ah, frequent where the gotcha. kids and it, it doesn't make any sense to us because ashley and i discussed it just the other day and we're like how do you play this because she actually watched a video of a family playing this and it's a pretty sizable family but it's you, you draw cards and one of them actually is, you know, they say who is the imposter, but they're playing uh-huh. this on the playground. Like nobody mm-hmm. has like these cards or, or deciding who the imposter is. So we're not really sure how it happens, but, you <laughs> mm-hmm. know, it's it's little kid logic. So gotcha. Gotcha. But, yeah, we, we don't Whatever really works handle- for them. Exactly. Exactly. Whatever works for them. Just do what you want. So mm-hmm. the, now the funny thing about it, uh, this five year old kid of mine um until recently, he was corrected on on how to actually pronounce "among us" because up until Saturday, he's been saying "among us" <laughs> as if it's one whole word or name of like something like a fungus, among us, or something, uh, right? Or right, like a right. festivus for the rest of us. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so 
um, Among Us is what we or he wanted to play. <laughs> and then I had him describe to me because at, at this point, Saturday, like I'm like, OK, what is Among Us? How do you play this game? Because I don't know what the, the purpose of it is. And I was like, well, you have to run around and one somebody is the imposter and they have to tag you or, or kill you or whatever. And then, you know, that's it. So I'm like, OK, and you want to play this with two people. And but that's mm-hmm. not the question I asked because he's not there with that kind of logic. So I said, basically, you're describing tag and you want to play tag. Is that it? And he's like, uh, it's among us. I was like, yeah, but tag, <laughs> we're, we're going to play tag because that's what you want to play. So he's like, okay, fine. So he, well, I guess I'm it. So he goes off running and I do, you know, a slight jog just to, you know, because, you know, it's, he's five, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we play one round of that. Eventually I do tag him because like he runs around a house and then I just meet him on the other side going the opposite way, outsmarting him because he's five. And then he's like, oh, you got me. And he's like, I'm on base. And like, you never described where base was. So that doesn't count. <laughs> so we tried again and I'm like, okay, this time you can be it and I'll go run. And then I'm like, well, you know, now is my time to show him what real speed is. I will actually run away from him. Uh-oh. And then I like get ready to go. And then as soon as I pivot and turn, like I realize that I am not as old or not as young as I used to be. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, Courtney. You are I, not a spring chicken, my friend. I I'm am, sorry to break this news to you. I think I'm probably a early autumn rooster, I think. <laughs> and I say this because just as I turn to pivot and I'm about to spring off into like the front yard. Um, I I hear or maybe feel, no, I feel, but maybe I possibly heard a pop oh. uh, <laughs> coming from my calf muscles. Oh no, so I'm like, did it hurt? Oh my God, did it hurt so badly. I'm like, <laughs> I nearly like wanted to collapse on the ground, oh, but I'm no. like, ah, oh. and it's almost as if my leg or my calf muscle just like, hey, just like right no no i'm sorry let me let me back that up it's like my calf muscle said hey stop it and just (laughs) immediately i just froze in position and then hobbled inside the house because i'm like yeah no more outside we're done because what i left out was earlier that day and playing outside Mm -hmm. because again the kid wanted to play outside um Mm -hmm. and he well he didn't do anything to me no, it in was, the heat. He wanted oh, to yes. play outside. In the heat. Yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened, we were playing swords because, he's, of course, he's got swords and we're just, you know, and it, it's not bad because we play swords, you know, regularly enough. And this time we're just outside and it's pretty much clear, flat ground, except for like there's a tree stump over there. And then there's like a playscape, you know, in the in the corner. Actually, it's in the main part of the 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 yard but you can clearly see it and we're dodging all around it and then next thing i know like i'm dodging his like his swipes and his stabs and next thing and i'm backing up (laughs) and then all of a sudden i like like oh what is this thing like coming up behind me and next thing i know i am tumbling down to the ground and i see i i'm like (laughs) perpendicular looking at like the tree stump that I'm now like laying on and rolling over and trying to recover immediately getting back up on my feet. Oh, However, the, let's see the right uh, quadrant of my buttocks had been like severely like injured. I, I want to say, cause I, I felt it and I continued to feel it for the next couple of days. Now the child, he goes off and runs and tells his mother who, First, the words that he says, and I hear this like back later, Ashley tells me, I was like, yeah, uh, T fell, but he's okay. Because, and then I, I go and meet Ashley later. And then she's like, yeah, I happen to be looking out the window and I see you, <laughs> you know, moving. <laughs> like she's watching me, but she's not really looking or paying attention. But she just yeah. happens to notice that all of a sudden I just kind of drop out of frame. And then I <laughs> jump back up again, like several feet away from where I dropped out so yeah wow. that, that's I, I and even in real time i'm like oh my god i think i'm falling i have to catch my fall and i can't catch my fall because i'm already on the ground and looking at the ground but i'm like why is the ground not soft <laughs> oh i'm all over this tree stump so oh no yeah and that is why i was in so much pain first 
And then like 20 minutes later, that's when I decide to go sprint. And that's when my calf pops. And basically it's called tennis leg. My mother looked it up for me later. And uh, I pretty much had a limp for a good couple days. Oh and no! It's only it's only today that I I really haven't been feeling it that much, but it's been there. Like I'm I'm still not at that stage. I don't think I ever will be where I can just go off and run real quick. But because um, my leg will be ah, ah, nope 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 I don't think so because it'll just it'll just tighten up because that's where it's at right now. It just feels tight. It doesn't really yeah. hurt. But every so often, like I might like just jab my thigh and then all of a sudden I'll, I'll kind of feel like, hey, hey, we're, we're not there yet. Stop it. So that was that was pretty much my weekend, um, kind of just staying elevated or keeping my leg elevated and trying to find other treatments such as like Ben Gay, which I mean, the smell is just strong. I don't think it did anything. Uh, I found icy hat, icy hot patches, but I don't think it stuck to my leg really well. So I only really only use one. I'm like, no, nope, I'll just deal with it and uh, just continue walking around, working it out. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'm I'm back. I feel like I'm, Are I'm you good. Back? Are you hundred percent again? I I would rate myself at ninety to ninety five percent. And even as I walked into the quote unquote studio today to, to, mm-hmm. to this recording, I was kind of just measuring and just in case like my mother asked like, Hey, how are you feeling? How's your leg? And then I can give her an adequate answer. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. It's just, I'm not going to be, you know, running, even if I did like warm ups. So I, I understand the importance of warm ups, and I, I've, I mean, I've known it. I've had PE class. I passed with a D so I understood what warm ups are for. I, I get it, but you mm-hmm. know, as a kid, you don't really need it because you're, you're already kind of limber and ready to go. But, you know, me kind of forgetting that I'm not five, I am 35, and I cannot just go running at any, you know, I, I just can't do that anymore. But the other part of it, too, was I was pivoting when I was trying to run. So that also mm-hmm. had to do because this particular condition that I had. I didn't write down the name. I just wrote down tennis leg. So you can feel free to Google it and see the exact thing. And I already know like certain people that I know that are listening that can tell me exactly what it is and what I could have done to treat it afterwards. Yeah. But I didn't know at the time. I just was like, oh, my God, I broke my leg. Like, I think a bone snapped. <laughs> that or the muscle is oh, no my longer goodness. A, the muscle is no longer <laughs> attached to whatever tendons or ligaments it should be. And I... Like I really was in denial of how much pain I was in. I just knew I wanted to go sit down and like not be outside anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm done with outside. Outside is done. No more outside. I'm going home. No. Oh. So. Well, yeah. as a not so springy chicken, we have our days where we can't push ourselves like we once were when we were much springier. So it's it's mm-hmm. all good. I'm glad you're back to your normalish self. Um, you just have to keep mm-hmm. that stuff in mind, my friend. All right. Well, let us continue on with our next uh, thing segment here. Um, oh, where did my soundboard go? There it is. Word watch. It's a word watch, but it's more, it's actually another one of those articles of words. Mm -hmm. um, And you'll see why, hopefully, because, well, let's just get into it. This is obscure punctuation marks you should start using. Ooh, let's let's, let's go. I'm I knew invested. it. I knew it. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip the couple paragraphs that it uh, introduces everything. But the rhetorical question mark is the first one. Okay. And the rhetorical question mark or irony mark looks like a backwards question mark. Henry Dunham created it in 1580 for questions meant to denote irony. Its use died out shortly, mm-hmm. shortly after, but this would mm-hmm. certainly clear up the tone of some questions, especially in texting. So... Yeah, I'm all for that one. Yes. The the next one is the Interrobang, which is... Yes, I love that one. Exactly, because we have t-shirts at the Indube store. So, yes, uh, and I wear mine frequently. And then, and just a reminder, an Interrobang is a fusion of the exclamation point and question mark. You're probably already familiar with its separated form. Have you ever read a book where someone shouts, you did what? Or something (laughs) to that effect. 
That's the essence of the Intero Bang. Now here's a I new one. It. I do too, as as you know. <laughs> Here is a new one. It is called Love Point. Now, okay. a love point looks like two question marks that share a period and form a heart. Oh. Oh, that's cute. Yes, it's meant to share. I'm sorry, it's meant to show affection from the speaker or writer to the receiver. It may not come up in professional emails, but it's nice touch for Valentine's Day cards. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The next one here is the certitude point. It is the now defunct punctuation mark would I'm sorry, this now defunct punctuation mark would be well used today instead of all caps. You can't find it on your keyboard anymore, but you could write it out yourself. And what it looks like is an exclamation point. Actually, it looks like a cross with a little period or a point underneath. Mm -hmm. But I think the way that you can recreate it is um, using the strikeout feature or not feature, but like depending on how you are able to text or write something in a work word document and use the strike through that's how you get the exclamation point or the certitude point certitude point get it yes. i mean call about that's the right name i know i know it, it, I sh- certitude points have a straight line running horizontally through the exclamation point use them for statements that need extra conviction Yes. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. The Sark Mark, which I, I suddenly feel like this episode is brought to you by Sark Mark, uh, and you'll understand why in a moment. Now, here's one that would get a lot of use. The Sark Mark looks like a loose spiral with a dot in the middle, and it's meant to show sarcasm. However, <laughs> I love it. However, uh, this website that I'm reading from can't show it to you because it can only u- be used if you've bought a special font. Paul Sack trademarked it, but it hasn't gotten a lot of use yet. It might be time to change that. Now, with that said, I have since gone on. And when uh, before we had started, I told you I was doing some research and I went to go find it. You can install it on your uh, iOS device, your Android device. Um, I forgot where else you can get it. Um, I think Windows has it. I mean, it's for free, at least for those two devices. And I thought it was a third place. So feel free to go ahead and look that up or go to sarkmark.com and I will spell it for you. S-A-R-C-M-A-R-K.com, all one word. And uh, look for it there. You can find links. You can see what it looks like. Um, and um, yeah, I you can expect that to be used more often in my own either tweets or text messages uh-huh. because yeah, I love it. It's great. <laughs> I kind of need that in my life. I've been I've been doing the poor man's version of the Sark Mark, and oh, like it's you know the squiggly line. It's so it's it's hard to explain, but it's a squiggly line that's like it's horizontal. Okay, think of a horizontal line, uh-huh. and then like make make a, a couple waves in it. <laughs> Tilda, is that what it's called? It that is what it's called. What? Okay, so that. You use that before and after. It, it works best because I've seen it mainly on TikTok. Um, but it works best if you use it before and after a specific word, not necessarily a whole phrase. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, have you seen it? The t- you said it's called the tilde? Yes. So the tilde, or you, if you have like bring up your emoji keyboard and you use like the sparkly stars. Mm hmm. To me, that's the same version of the the Sark Mark, and it seems to be more widely accepted because people like know about it. I don't know how many people actually know about the Sark Mark, unless you're word nerds like us. But I didn't even know about it until today. And we are back now. If we sound a little different, we had to switch. Uh, devices and means of recording so um yeah hopefully it's not too too crazy but the show must go on am i correct yes show must go on now we left off uh some there are a few more of the punctuations uh they're not as exciting as the ones that i really wanted to get to such as the snark mark and the sark mark and our favorite the interrobang but they're there so do check those out. In the meantime, we will continue because we have mail. Letters. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Mailman, mailman, mail today. Reach right in and pull one out. Those letters. I love those letters. Let's find out what you've got to say. Yes, 
yes, we do indeed have a uh, question, which uh, I cannot wait to get into. And the question comes from our good friend Laura from Loudavision, who asks us, what do you think has changed for the better since the pandemic began? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that jumps off the top of your head right now? Um, or you need some time to kind of... Let me chew on that because a lot of things come up and I have to decide which one to... <laughs> to tackle first? Focus on, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, well, I'll jump in first and say, like, I do like how... Um, Masks are more accepted, and it's not just something that we see like in, in some of the Asian countries like Japan, and I think China would do it too, where they would wear masks all the time. And, um, and that has shown not only to protect us from the pandemic or from the from uh, COVID and coronavirus and all, of it, it actually brought down the flu like this past year. So that was, you know, and then we talked about that last episode. So that's something that I, I feel that has changed for the better. I would hope that that's something that we as a society can continue next year or, or rather next flu season. So that way it's, you know, not such a big deal. Um, what else did I, do I like that has changed? Um, changed for the better. Now, and I had thought about it, and I haven't I hadn't really formulated all of my answers, and I, I just know that it has exposed a lot of flaws that we have as a, also as a culture or society that we depend on, I guess, meeting face-to-face -face for so many things, or, or infrastructures that were out of place, such as educational means, and, and healthcare, and things I think now maybe are being put in place. So something like, if something like this should happen again, that, you know, we'd be like, okay, let's just remember 2020, and, uh, you know, let's follow that protocol, but how, however it is that we ended it, not how we began, because some of it was just a hot mess. Kind of is, oh yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah, towards the <laughs> right, right. Now the larger answer that I have is um, basically the work from home. How we have found that to be something that's very beneficial to those that have doable, doable and have embraced it because of a plethora of reasons and I have to give major kudos and shout outs to whom I've personally calling the representative of the work from home front um, our good friend Portia or, or LeBlack as she has um, also been known her writing name and pen name uh, Twitter name but she has recently uh, been interviewed for an article for Bloomberg and also recently been on CNN discussing this very topic and how there is a her almost trademarked at this point term boomer power play and her millennial um, checkmate and uh, uh, takedown basically I had a much I had the words in my head prettier. prettier yes like it, it just flowed out and I'm like I, I've got the perfect response for this but now it's all kind of just muddled unfortunately um, as the thunder booms in the background it's not even raining it's still the sun is still shining I like when that happens anyway so I will definitely post those particular links but she has basically kind of like become part of the work from home movement as I as I like to say and she is representing those who are here to like continue to do remote work or ask jobs or, or stand for those jobs that um, that can be done from home remotely rather than going into the office because what is the point of going to the office when you can be much more productive especially if you like have kids or if you are disabled or there's a whole number of reasons why you know it might be better off for you to just stay home rather than commute however long it may take you to get to, to the office when you can be just as productive if not more productive at home so you're you're your answers are very similar to kind of, I mean, I was thinking of all these things, wearing the mask and normalizing that and working from home. Um, 
you kind of touched on um, the second thing, just, I don't know, having empathy, having more empathy for people and kind of getting out of your own bubble is something that I have seen, I think I've seen a little bit, well, I've seen both. A little bit more empathy for the folks around you and for the folks around the world and not being so self-centered, but I've also seen the opposite of that where there's a lot more self-centered. So I choose to focus on the like um, former, which is showing more empathy for folks around you and being a helping hand and being a good neighbor and a good citizen and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I think the 2020 and the pandemic has humbled everybody, even even no matter where you fall on the spectrum of self-centeredness or um, having more empathetic, everybody has been affected by it. And so um, I, I think everybody has kind of been humbled even in the slightest of ways because of it. Um, one thing that I think and I you know and I hopefully we can like keep that same energy mm-hmm. and just stop I don't know, be better people, be kinder to one another. The one thing I want to continue is I guess it's kind of a small thing, but I but there was a period where there was like you should have washed all your groceries before you bring them in because at that time they didn't know or didn't quite understand how the virus was transmitted and stuff. And right. Like, well, it could be on your groceries and hmm. wash your hands and we should have washed your hands. But, oh, my God. Um, that's that. I mean, the washing your hands thing and the fact that so many people weren't, like, doing that regularly and, yeah. That's the weird thing. Ugh. So, did this wrong. Yeah. Yes. Continue to wash your hands, people. But definitely... Wiping down groceries with like alcohol, like like, uh, like rubbing alcohol, rubbing uh, alcohol, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. or or um, disinfectant wipes. Even though it's basically agreed upon that the, the virus can't really live on surfaces for a long time, just the thought of not wiping down my groceries before I put them up or put them in my refrigerator is no longer an option. Just because there's still other germs that are out there. Right. Because you don't know where your grocery comes from. Right. And even if you do, it's not going to hurt you. Me. I'm talking about myself. It's not going <laughs> to hurt me to take an extra five or ten minutes to wipe down my groceries, let them dry off, and put them up. And I feel better about it. It feels, it feels like it, they're a little bit cleaner when I put them up. And that way, when I go to grab something, um, I won't be picking up the germs from, you know, that they carried or that they still have on them, perhaps, um, when I go to pour milk or grab a cookie or something. Mm-hmm. It's, all, it's all covered. So that's something I'm going to keep doing. And, I mean, because it's also a good reminder for me to, like, wipe down surfaces to disinfect the way. Or, like, the light switches or the doorknobs, things like that. It's kind of my reminder. Have you done this? Probably haven't. Now's a good time to do this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I, I agree with that because I mean the next. I don't want to say the next pandemic or anything to that effect, but the next thing you know could be one of those things where it's not airborne, but it's like based on touch. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden I have the movie Fallen in my head where the, uh, that that movie really has missed I've seen it and it sounds terrible it sounds like a horror movie oh it is I'm sorry you were the way you were responding to it I thought you had seen it no oh okay it's called Fallen I believe it's called Fallen it is a um Dennis Dennis wow Denzel Washington uh thriller um Mm -hmm. and it's about a no no it is about a um Basically, a the villain of the piece, he enchants or, or, or kind of does some kind of mystical evil thing where his spirit can continue to live on as long as he touches somebody, and then his spirit goes into the next person, and he as long as he keeps touching people, like his spirit will keep going, and he can like possess whoever person that he's touching, and... Um, the cop who put him away, who is played by Denzel Washington, um, has to kind of keep finding him and then following him and trying to, you know, 
get rid of him. So, and then there's this one scene where, like, the killer is in a crowd of people, and all of a sudden, like, you just see, like, the, um, whoever the killer is possessing at the time all just touches one person and they touch the next person and it just goes throughout the whole cro- crowd. And he's like running it like very fast because all you have to do is touch the person next to you and you're traveled. Yeah, he's traveled. I mean, he's not inhabiting all these people at once, but he is moving through them. So right. suddenly now he's like way across the room rather right. than, yeah. So it's, they're, they're, I don't remember the whole movie like front to back, but there are certain scenes like that one that it comes to mind and that is a way how I'm pretty sure you know diseases can travel I mean maybe not like through people like that but you know still the, the fact that you're touching people and then now they have it and I mean it's, it's how you know that works <laughs> and it's good like you're saying wash your, your your foods and things at your groceries and take better care just you know better cleanliness and that's I think that is also something else that we have learned from the pandemic overall is just better hygiene and just being clean and wiping down surfaces because that's something that still happens now at the hospital where they're you know wiping doorknobs and and all the buttons that people touch all day long so mm-hmm. I mean because if you think about it like I like shoes aren't allowed like out my shoes aren't allowed in my house is because it's a similar concept when you walk outside you're stepping on everything mm-hmm. bugs and Poop. bird dropping animal dropping and yeah, it's just everything and so when you wear shoes in the house you're essentially checking all that in it's the same with your hand too mm-hmm. you touch so much stuff even if you don't touch a lot of stuff you still touch a lot of stuff mm-hmm. and I mean, this is why washing hands before you prepare a meal or eat meal is important. Um, and then sometimes we don't, and that's why you gotta wipe down the surfaces, like the surfaces and, and doorknobs and things, because we're not perfect. We don't always wash hands before we touch things. <laughs> right. So it, it just it just kind of brings us home that okay, maybe we can, you know, add this to the daily or even weekly chores of just wiping things down, taking a little bit extra caution and care, and just being more mindful about that kind of stuff. Because it's easy to forget. Exactly. And I'm super conscious, too, of just touching my face because, hey, yeah. you all have holes in your face and you can't tell me that you don't stick your fingers in them. So. Right. Right. Yeah, just had to make that point clear because, you know, he was like, I, I don't I don't even put my fingers in my nose. Yes, you do. I you saw know. you do it yesterday. Yeah. Not even yesterday. You probably did it sometime today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went there. I said it. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, I was also teeing you up in case you had uh, more words to say regarding uh, working from home, too, or, or remotely, because I, I know that that's... That old, it, it, it is a hot topic. It, it is something that clogs your vacuum. Well, I just feel like, I mean, this is, that's a good thing, I guess, that came out of the pandemic for me. If you can say that, I, I don't know. But I was able to work from home, and that's one of my dreams, is to be able to work remotely so that I don't have to go into a physical location every day, especially if I don't have to. Now, my preferred method is that one that works for my job is like a hybrid where there are some days that are remote and some days where you do show up in the office because sometimes there are there, there are a couple of things that need to be done, you know, on site. Correct, it's correct. not every day, not, not all the time because what's, what's the point of that? What's... Mm-hmm. Other than, getting back to a status quo but I feel like COVID helped us in in the just in the work the work arena helped us to challenge the status quo and realize oh most of us can run businesses and most operations can continue on a remote basis right absolutely we change things up we, did, we don't have to do things the way that we've done it forever just because that's the way we've always done it Mm -hmm. and so um going back to work has been fun for me just (laughs) because like okay so i'm now less productive wait did you put a sark mark on that (laughs) 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> but, you know, I've found that, and I can't say I've been less productive back in the office, but it's like every, my productivity has changed. Mm. Um, I'm able to still get work done, of course, because that's my job and that's what I have sold my time to do in exchange for money. <laughs> but it, the, the, the phrasing of that, it just <laughs> made me laugh so much, yes. <laughs> Definitely my like level of anxiety and kind of because now I have to fight traffic to get to work. Right. I have to worry about the weather or mm. I have to worry about clothing and packing the lunch and stuff. I mean, that's just extra stuff that I have to do just so I can do my same job mm-hmm. in the office that I've been doing at home for you know a year. So it's just, it's just, I, I. With, I don't know, I, I'm glad that that has always been challenged and some people are saying that it really doesn't matter if you're able to work remotely. Some people think, okay, that's not normal, this is just for the time being, we gotta get back to normal, come on back into the office, and that's like the only reason. Mm. That's when it really bothers me, is, is if that is your only reason to be in the office, is that is the normal, that's the norm. That's not good enough. The other argument um, being made, um, and and by the way, we are more than likely going to have an episode about this because I did talk to Portia prior to um, uh, our recording today, and I mean, she already gave like my uh, her blessing, like, oh yeah, feel free to talk about it. And I'm like, well, we're also going to have you on or have you come back because she has been on the podcast before, and um, and we will discuss it a bit more because uh, as she was on. CNN, she was ready. She had her like, uh, she, I don't, she didn't have papers in front of her, but she could have, and she could have went like line by line, like, okay, I've got the receipts, and I mean, I even got some more inside info, like as of today, that even backs her up further as to, I mean, we already already knew the truth that remote work is is helpful. Like, let's keep doing this. Um, but she she has like literal proof, literal receipts, and she shall return to you know state them and just you know talk about it. And plus, we got other like some um, uh, since this is Juneteenth coming up. Um, I figure we'll also come have her come back, not necessarily for that purpose, but there's also something like so so off the presses that I didn't even talk to you about it yet, Courtney. That's how like. Yeah. So you remember last year we did Black History Stories. So we'll, we'll definitely come back and do that with her, uh, with some other places similar to Tulsa that have been, you know, other Black Wall Streets that have been knocked down for one reason or another. Well, we'll kind of know the main reason, but yes, we'll, we'll talk about some other places. But oh, I love it. all that to say, we're just we're just gassing up the return of Portia, and right now her, you know, spearheading this movement of hey, um, you can stop all these boomer power plays, and I'm going to keep saying it because she coined it. So I love it. That's yeah, a great, that's a great term, and I love it because you don't have to be a boomer to be a boomer. Like you don't have to fall into um, into the boomer. I guess age brackets in order to have boomer mentality, mm-hmm. and I uh, most of us definitely work with a bunch of boomers who just don't want change, want to keep it the way it's always been, and just because it's always been that way, that kind of thing. Right. But yes, we'll we'll definitely have her come in and. and continue this conversation but I do want to give a, a thank you to Laura for her question because that just set, set me up just to set up um, Portia and give me a reason to you know plug her her uh, her interview and all those things shall be linked and now we will close the mailbag And since we mentioned Black History, last episode, Courtney, I did tell you that I had a, um, a figure that I wanted to, to discuss regarding Tulsa, and I have his uh, bio here, so bear with me as I read it to you quickly. Black History. Black History. Black History. Black History. Facts. This is A.J. Smitherman. 
who organized African-American resistance against mob violence, distributed a strong Democratic African-American newspaper in Oklahoma and the East Coast, and played a major role in the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921. Smitherman worked with uh, William H. Twine of the Muskegee uh, Simeter. Okay. I... Some of this is a cold read. I kind of breezed through it earlier. An African-American newspaper at uh, Muskegee, Oklahoma. Be- uh, before beginning his own newspaper, the Muske- Muskegee... Are you even pronouncing it right? Because I'm seeing it so many times now. Muskegee. Muskegee. Okay. Thank you. The Muskegee Star in 1912. It's like when you read the word bread over and over again. It's like, is bread even a real word? What's happening? <laughs> that also happened with another article I was reading, um, which I almost shared with you. And it could be in the future one. Um, words that uh, are pronounced differently depending on where you are in the country. So one of those words is crayon. Although... It's, uh, it's what? Crayon or crayon. Oh. How do you pronounce it? Crayon? Yeah, I, I, I say, say crayon. You say crayon? Down south, say crayon, crown. <laughs> 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 well, in the middle of the night when I was reading this article, I sat there and kind of laughed, like, to myself. Although Ashley was giving me weird looks, like, what is wrong with you? And I just kind of looked over at her and just kept saying, crayon, crayon. <laughs> <laughs> like, like some kind of weirdo. So, so yes, these are the things that happen in my household now. Just, just weird. Anyway, let's continue back to Smitherman. Sorry. Um, one year later, he moved uh, the star to Tulsa. Like Twine, Smitherman, born in 1985, reportedly practiced, I'm um, sorry, yeah, reportedly practiced law in addition to operating his newspaper. Smitherman's Tulsa star distributed his staunch Democratic ideals to black subscribers in an era when Republicans dominated the African American landscape. The owner also preached self-reliance and militant action to protect against the tide of racial violence occurring around the country at the time. Smithman consistently lectured to the community the necessity of arming itself and protecting its brethren from lynching. To further slow his commitment, oh, I'm sorry, to further show his commitment, Smithman would rush to the scene of Oklahoma racial conflict to provide assistance, not only to report it after an outbreak of lynchings in 1920, Governor J.B.A. Roberts, Robertson organized an interracial conference and invited Smitherman to be one of the African-American leaders involved. The 1921 destruction of the Greenwood District of Tulsa by white mobs destroyed Smitherman's press, business, and residence. Seemingly blamed by white Tulsa for inciting the incident and charged by the courts with rioting, he fled Tulsa for the East Coast. Extradition efforts failed, and the case never developed for trial. After leaving Tulsa, Smitherman resided in Springfield, Massachusetts, and eventually started another newspaper. In 1925, he moved to Buffalo, New York, and worked for other African-American newspapers. In 1932, he founded the Buffalo Star, later named the Empire Star. A.J. Smitherman died in June 1961, and his newspaper folded soon afterward. And... That is from the Oklahoma Historical Society. I will also post post this article or this story in the show notes so you can go back and check it out. Um, But yeah, I forgot. uh, I listened to the podcast, um, what is it, Black History Year, I believe, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And that's how I first heard about him. So I I wanted to make sure I, I go back to research about him and find out more information. So this... This article kind of summed them up very nicely after all the things I saw. However, there are several documentaries that are out there that I still have yet to watch, but I do intend to find them and watch them just because I just want to absorb more information about this time period or rather, you know, this event because, you know, my school never talked about it. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Yes. Um... Let me put this plug in here. This show is brought to you by this brand new website. Well, it's not new, new, but it's new. Uh, TStrollingWatson.com to get your your podcasting needs, your voiceover needs, or if you need some voice talent, or if you just need some audio production, also kind of more or less or not related to podcasting, but go check it out if you need, um, you know, if you want to build a website, and, or not a website, I'm sorry, if you want to build a podcast or you want to produce a podcast, then uh, my services are available to you. 
Um, and uh, all rates are there, and they're also yeah, I'll work with you depending on your budget. And um, if you just need some voice talent, uh, I, rates are also available, and you know, we'll work with your budget. And uh, yeah, so do check those that website out. And uh, yeah, I don't have an official ad written or anything like that. I just wanted to make sure I put it in there. It went live on Sunday, and I tried my best to send the links out to people so they could take a look at it and make sure all the buttons work because some of them didn't. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it does. It does. But as far as I know, everything is fixed. And um, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you also need a creative coach or consultant, I'm also available for that, too. So if you've got ideas and you need a little jostling to get them, you know, those juices going or like some maybe you're working on a story and the plot isn't quite working out correctly or you want to do a project of some sort and you're not quite sure how to get started or the means to I don't know it all depends on whatever you're trying to do I might be able to help you so yeah um. so yeah go over there and check it out and see if I can help you and let's let's do business I do believe that is all that I have. Although I'm trying to think if I had anything. Do you have any um, recommendations? Anything you're reading or watching? Have you been able to watch any? Well, I know you had some, some time to watch some things. I don't know if you did watch anything. Uh, I watched a lot of comfort shows, so not a whole lot of new stuff. <laughs> like I had planned. I had planned to, you know read a whole bunch, watch a whole bunch of new stuff, and nope, that didn't happen. No, okay. Um, but I do recommend the Court of... Ooh, let me remember the name before I... Okay, Court of Thorns and Roses. Okay, Maybe. okay. By Sarah J. Mass. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. She's pretty popular, um, like, fantasy author, but I kind of blew through... There's five books now, and I think it's six is coming and the, the current five books includes one novella and um, I kind of blew through the first like three books pretty quickly like in the span of a month mm. maybe a little longer than a month but I mean I just I love the series I love the characters it's just a very it's got fairy it's fae it's just it's great magic and stuff <laughs> it's just a very interesting um telling of of like magic and fairies and stuff. So check it out if that's what you're into. If not, that's cool. I hope you find the same. <laughs> I mean, you, you just sound... Uh, I want to use the word ethereal. Is that the word I want? Just but ethereal? ethereal. There it is. I knew there was a syllable I was missing. I can see the word in my head, but just not pronounce it. Because words are hard. Yeah. Trademarked. Registered. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, I mean, I thought there was something fairies and fae related. I think it's just something that... That was a day that recently happened. I think Black Fairies Day or something, where a lot of oh, people were yeah. dressed in cosplay. Yes, cosplay. Where so good. Yes. It was just a thing too, and like they meet up and they dress as fairies and they're like out in the, in the in the park or wherever they meet up and it's amazing. Right. I am not surprised, but I'm not. A, I was not aware of it, or rather, I was not aware of it, but I was not surprised that that's something that happens or has happened. And Ashley now wants to participate whenever it happens again and I'll say I'll, I told her I'll do my best to try to remember to help her out with that because I mean she could totally rock a pair of wings but I think I think that's something that she wants to get into is the a little bit of you know cosplay I mean, I, that's how it starts I understand you just kind of dip your toe in and the next thing you know you're just a whole different character and I support it so we, we shall see but we're also going to try and attempt to do some cons this year at least start the ones in Connecticut because they haven't um, I say they meaning both Ashley and the kid they both have not been to any cons before where uh, I have actually been to I think two no three well one was a food fest but there was a con next door but I'm counting it um, and then there's also a Star Trek one which I forgot that I went to with my dad when I was when I was a wee like a little tyke. A wee boy. A wee boy, yes. But I'm saving that story for another time. So, yeah, that I uh, would believe wrap up the show due to all the issues that we have this episode. I've thrown off my game and my rundown is missing. So I don't know what else I missed, but that's okay. 
because we will always have another episode another day. And um, I'm going to be putting out some other supplemental material. So be sure to subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already, because you're going to find some other things there, such as conversations with Ashley, since I keep bringing her up. Yes, she has been doing some recording with me. And as of right now, that's the only place you'll get to hear her stories. Um, like when we watch Black Mirror and I have her tell me what she thought of the episodes. And yes, we watched that episode, um, National Anthem with the... Uh, the Prime Minister and the Piggy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Just just in case. Just in case you weren't sure. Uh-huh. We, we, we watched that one. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So uh, do find all those things at Indube.com. Um, and uh, you can find me at Indube on Twitter and uh, IndubePod at gmail.com and all that good stuff. Um, and where can they find you, Courtney, if they're looking for you? If you are looking for me, you can find me on the Twitter at I am Katie Hinton, where these days I'm, I'm not talking about a whole lot. But when I do talk, it's mostly about plants and uh, the weather, probably. <laughs> into that, you know, check me out. <laughs> Yes, that reminds me. I do got to send you pictures of a plant <laughs> uh, that's Ooh, that's getting pretty unruly. I think we named it Jack because it is a beanstalk. Ooh, yeah, send me that picture. I will. Uh, pictures, I, pictures. I can love him. Pictures, pictures <laughs> from him from afar <laughs> from afar yes uh, so yes like I said all things at and do tell someone you value that you tell someone that you value that you value them live without regrets and live for the folks you love seriously because without getting too personal there's been a lot of like there's been a lot of death happening a lot of sicknesses so please make sure you cherish your loved ones and tell them that you care and and so absolutely all that yes and do practice self-care mental health care all of those things and really just you know be there for your loved ones and your friends and remind them that you love them um, just really wanted to get that out there because there's a lot going on so and then as we talked about hygiene please wash your legs your face the bottoms of your feet uh, the undersides of your dishes your groceries get vaccinated because some of you still haven't yet doorknobs. the doorknobs uh cabinets the light switches be careful with the light switches just to make sure there's not water like too wet yeah. and just you know yeah. be safe be smart yes good lord people um get vaccinated yes i said it again still you know wear your mask i mean it's, it's wear your mask. social distance all that good stuff. Let's not forget those tips we have learned and become accustomed to. Right, right. And I know depending on where you live, you, you probably can go without your mask. So if you feel like you want to and you're vaccinated, then, you know, I guess. Yeah, then and only then. But no one is pressuring you and don't let other people pressure you. Like, you don't have to wear your mask. Hey, it's my face. Leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry. Let me... my body. Right, right. Back off. <laughs> And then you can say things under your breath, but they can't see you because you have a mask on. Ha ha. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> anyway, I've been your benevolent host, T. Sterling Watson. <laughs> and remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. Thanks for listening to the Indu Podcast, which was recorded from the south side of Wakanda in Little New Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive, and is part of the Indube Network. Want more Indube? Follow on Instagram and Twitter at Indube and on Facebook at Indube Pod. You can contact us and send Ask Indube questions by emailing indubepod at gmail.com. Want to support or donate? Find the T Public Store or become a patron on Patreon where subscribing gives you perks and extra things from the Indube Network. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and share the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, Podbean, and wherever else podcasts are found. And of course, visit Indube.com for all of this and much more. Thank you so much for letting us entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Until next time. Use your words, Chief. Good boy. This has been another 3SFX production.
Hey, dear listeners, just a gentle reminder that you can support the Indube Network by subscribing to the Indube Patreon at patreon.com slash Indube. But hold up, Sterling. I keep hearing about this website. What is Patreon? So glad you asked. Patreon is a membership platform where subscribers can pay, fund, or donate to creators for content. In other words, if you subscribe for a small monthly fee, you can get bonus podcasts, reviews, videos, and just awesome extra goodies from the Indube Network. So all that extra stuff we couldn't fit in this episode they're listening to right now will be on the Patreon? Exactly, and so much more. Oh, really? Well, where does my money go? Well, podcasts cost money. Microphones, conferencing software, and host websites aren't free. So every little bit that a patron chips in helps produce the content they already love and enjoy. And for your contributions, based on how much you give per month, will unlock more perks to be enjoyed that are created specifically for patrons. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So where do I go again? Patreon.com slash Indube. Browse around. Some posts are free. Most are a dollar. But you're free to do more and you will get more. And we at the Indube Network will certainly appreciate the help keeping the studio lights on. That's for sure. And thank you to the patrons that are already supporting and enjoying all that extra bonus content. Like that one video where you did that one thing you said you wouldn't, couldn't, and shouldn't do. Oh, I know. And I almost got killed to death trying to do it, but I did it and now it's done. That was hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) Good times. Good times. What's up, Indubians? You know what I hate? Yes, mushrooms. And yes, I also hate things with glitter on them. It gets on everything forever and ever and ever. Stop it now, please. I also hate paying so much money for car insurance. That's why I switched to root insurance. I was paying nearly a farm's worth with some general insurance and some progressive company quoted me even higher. Truth be told, I feel I'm in better hands with root insurance. Plus, I'm paying so much less. How do you get in? Go to j.mp slash root indube. That's j.mp slash r-o-o-t indube. And sign up. If approved, you'll get $50 off. My little special gift to you. Because I love you. But please, stop with the glitter. <laughs>